If you are watching this right now, then you are struggling with trying to figure out project requirements. And I remember my early project management days, how daunting that task was. And in fact, so many of my slave project management students have that exact same issue and dauntingness, which I've helped them through with slave project management, which by the way, the link is below this video. So in this video, guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna talk about project requirements. Are you ready? What does it mean to gather project requirements? First, we have to make a distinction because there is a distinction between gathering project requirements prior to the concept or idea officially becoming a project or gathering project requirements once the project is official and you're trying to prepare it to execute in a project format. In this video, we're gonna talk about the latter. Once you've been given the marching orders to do this project, you now have to gather your project requirements. So gathering project requirements in this way is really about ensuring you understand everything that you need that in essence you're gonna to have to deliver on at the end and what it is that you have to do to get yourself to that point at the beginning of the project before you even start it and kick it off with your project team members. Some of those project requirements are going to be standards that you need to ensure that everyone's gonna be delivering on. Those can be specifications in regards to what it is that you're going to be delivering, details around the timing of your activities, high level aspects of who do you need involved from an internal perspective, do you need to hire anyone external, is there any suppliers who need to get involved in your process as well, is there any other pieces of information from strategy perspective that you need to be aware of from senior management? So again, you're about collecting all of those requirements so you can understand the justification of why you're doing things, who you're gonna need, and specifically what it is that you have to do in a lot more detail than just the general orders that you're given, hey, here's a project we want you to do. Before we jump into project requirements, uh, guess what? You're gonna want to learn about this and I'm gonna talk to you a little bit later on in this video on how you can get your hands on it, so stay tuned. Define the scope. This is the first thing you have to do when it comes to project requirements. Because let's be honest, in the ideal world, when you're given your marching orders, you would have been given a lot of detail from your senior executive or the sponsor, whoever told you you're doing the project, and you would be able to start right away. Um, no, that does not happen. I wish it did, but it doesn't. So what you need to do as a project manager is you need to gather those requirements so that you can be successful in ensuring that that project comes to fruition. You usually get your marching orders, it's concepts, ideas, it's strategy, and now you have to make it realistic to bring it to fruition. So one of the things you do is a scope. What is the scope of what you're doing? Now it's not just a simple sentence of what it is you're gonna do. And you get a little bit more information like the objective, what is in and out. Get some detail as to why this is happening. That really becomes a scope template that you're gonna use to springboard. It's like a baseline, driving your actions moving forward for your project. So a really key critical project requirement document. Identify stakeholders. Now some people may be going, why would I do this now, Adriana, in the beginning of a project for project requirements? Why? Because your stakeholders are gonna be linked to how much time do you have in order to get this project done? And do you have the right stakeholders in place and the right team members to do it? Do you have to hire anybody? It's gonna be linked to budget. Do you, if you have to hire someone, do you have the money to do it? Do you need to get a vendor to do some build for you as well? Like again, that's why your stakeholder is really important. Like who needs to be involved in your project? And this is part of the requirements. Because again, when you get your marching orders, they may, whoever gave them to you, may not have thought about that. They may not have thought about all the players. There's always people who are missing. How many times in the middle of the project has that happened to you? Oh darn, we forgot to include quality. Oh darn, we forgot to include training. Oh darn, we forgot to include so-and-so. That's why this is so important, is you wanna think about all of those stakeholders. Now, not just the project team. Remember, a stakeholder is anyone who touches the project. So you want to ensure who are those individuals that need to be on your team, 
who are the peripheral people that may be supporting your team members, who are the people you can report into from a standpoint of your steering committee, who are the customer. Again, you want to have an understanding of this because I promise you, the more people you start adding on into your stakeholder list, the more work it becomes because there's things that you have to do for them. And you want to know this upfront because that needs to be built into your project plan. Again, part of your project requirement. Connect with your stakeholders. Yes, I know this gets missed all the time. Just because you identify your requirements and you figured out your scope and everything you have to deliver on and you figure out who you need to have, you don't start the project. You have to connect with them. I promise you, your requirement gathering is about who you think needs to be involved. Now you need to find out if they will be involved and can they be involved. They may have things on their schedule that they're unable to take off in order to help you on your project. So this becomes really critical, gets missed so often. It, I teach my SLAY students all the time, the SLAY project management students all the time on this, on ensuring you communicate in advance to your the team member's manager first, because there's a respect aspect there. You can't assume they're gonna be on there. There's a little bit of hierarchy within the business world you wanna be aware of so that people don't feel like you're jumping over them when they are a manager of the people who are gonna be on your team. You need to connect with everyone and let them know what you're doing, you're gathering requirements. These are the people who you think you need to have involved. There's emails, there's a protocol to it, okay? There is a protocol to it, but if you follow it, the effort and energy behind spending a week or two connecting and ensuring everyone's bought in is huge, 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 and a very important part of your requirement gathering. Because again, you want to ensure you have all your ducks lined up in a row, and it's not just identifying, but it's ensuring that your stakeholders can also be part of that project. Get approval. This is your next step when it comes to project requirements. Because even though you got your marching orders, you've done your digging, you've got some more information, you got a lot more detail than you originally did on day one from your sponsor or senior executive. So you need to get approval on what you dug up and where you think you are going and with all the resources. So remember the stakeholder tip? Well, in that stakeholder tip, you would have gotten your steering committee. So now this is the time where you bring the steering meeting the steering committee members together for the first steering committee meeting, which is to go over your requirements. Like, hey, executives, you're on this project because you're gonna be impacted or your team members are on this who are critical players. And now this is our first meeting and I need you to approve all the requirements I've gathered. Are we all on the same page? So that approval is extremely important because it's your springboard that you're now gonna take all of your requirements that have approval and you're gonna start populating it in key documents, which is my next tip. Putting all of your gathered requirements into a project charter. This is now where you're ready. Once you've gotten your approval from your steering committee, you take all that information and you put it into your project charter. This is really the document. It's kind of the package that you want to give to your immediate team members so they now know what it is that they have to do. It has all of the requirements that they are aware of so that when you bring together your team for the first time, you are now sharing with them what it is that they're going to be doing. So you've already done the heavy lifting, you've already done the digging, you've already got the approval. So when you bring people together, they already know that they're going to be part of the project. You already got the manager's approval. You already got steering committee approval. It's really about, okay guys, now as subject matter experts, let's vet things out even more. And that's what's powerful when you do really good project requirement gathering is after this, you can start executing your project instead of waiting and doing requirement gathering. So this is important. Put it into your charter. Your charter now is your lifeline. If you're wondering about more information on charter, I got two places for you to go. One is this YouTube channel, go Adriana Girdler in the YouTube search bar, charter, and it'll give you some really good general information. But if you want more, because you're like, wow, this is an amazing document, you need to check out Slay Project Management, my online project management course. The link is below this video because I walk you through everything. Okay, you're here, <laughs> I love it. Guess what, remember I told you, in this video, I'm gonna share with you how to get your hands on this. I highly recommend you do. The link is underneath this video and it's free for you because I wanna give you something so you can be successful. And I'm telling you, it's a must, so go grab it.
Make sure you watch this next video. It has all the steps you need to write a project plan. If you could like this video, subscribe to our channel, join this amazing community. We would love to have you. On that note, see you at the next video.